Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, we continue our march through chapter six, which you will recall is about applications of the definite integral to solve real world problems. In today's video, I'll introduce what's called the consumer surplus. This is a topic from economics. It's a very interesting topic. And what's fun about it for us is that it can be visualized as the area of a region between curves. And that gets computed using a definite integral, which is why this topic is in chapter six. This material is from section 6.2, Applications in Business and Economics, more specifically the bottom of page 403 to the middle of page 405, example 5. The corresponding homework is this single exercise from section 6.2. Recall some business terminology that we used earlier in the semester. We had the idea of what was called the demand, which was denoted by a small letter x, it's a variable that represents the number of items made and sold. And then the price, denoted by a small letter p, is a variable that represents the selling price per item. For what we'll be discussing in the next three videos, it'll be useful to slightly change the terminology and to be more specific. So we'll have what I call the quantity demanded which can be denoted either by a small letter x or a small letter q, q for quantity. It's a variable that represents the number of items that consumers are willing to buy. And then what I'll call the demand price, denoted by a little p, but also by this symbol, capital D parentheses x or capital D parentheses q. This small letter p is a variable that represents the price, but it's the selling price that's necessary for consumers to be willing to buy the quantity x or q. The value of the variable p is given by a function, capital D parentheses x or capital D parentheses q, which is called the demand price function. The graph of the demand price function is called the demand price curve. Now note that when the selling price of an item is high, consumers won't be willing to buy many of the items. But when the selling price is low, consumers will, will be willing to buy a lot of the item. So therefore, the demand price curve, P equals D parentheses X, will go down as one moves from left to right. That is, the demand price function, P equals D parentheses X, will be a decreasing function. So for example, a demand price function could be this one, p equals 200 minus 0.02x. Let's think about some particular points on this graph. This point has coordinates 2000 comma 160. That means that when the selling price for some item is $160, consumers will be willing to buy 2000 of the items. This point has coordinates 9000 comma 20. That tells us that when the selling price is $20, consumers will be willing to buy 9,000 of the items. So again, you see the idea that the demand price curve will be going down as you move to the right. That is, the demand price function is a decreasing function. Now the endpoints are kind of uh, interesting in kind of a kooky way. This endpoint is at the point 0, 0,200. That means that if the selling price is $200, consumers will not be willing to buy any of the items. The demand quantity will be zero. This point has coordinates 10,000 comma zero. That point tells us that when the selling price is zero, consumers will be willing to show up and take 10,000 of the items for free. Now I want to discuss what's called the consumer surplus. Suppose that the demand price function is the one we discussed on the previous page, p equals 200 minus 0.02x. And suppose that the selling price of the item has been established at $80. We see on the, the d of x curve that the corresponding quantity is 6,000. 6,000 comma 80 is a point on that curve. We could denote this quantity and price by this symbol, x bar for the quantity and p bar for the price. So that means that that point on the graph has coordinates, x bar comma p bar, which are the numbers 6,000 comma 80. 
Now consider who would buy the item at this price. If the selling price is $80, then any consumer who would have been willing to pay more than $80 will buy the item if it's selling for $80. And consider how much money those consumers will feel like they saved. Those who were willing to pay $180 will feel like they saved $100. Those who were willing to pay $140 will feel like they saved $60. And those who were willing to pay, say, $100 would feel like they saved $20. The amounts that these consumers will feel like they saved can be illustrated on the graph of the demand price function. So here's the graph of the demand price, the price that the item has to be sold for in order for consumers to be willing to purchase X of the items. On this graph, we have a horizontal line shown that has line equation Y equals 80. That is that established price of $80 is the height of that, that black dotted line. So those consumers who were willing to pay $180, those consumers will feel like they saved $100. That's the height of that green line. It's the difference in height between this black dotted line at height 80 and that point on the on the curve that's height 180. The consumers who are willing to pay 140 will feel like they saved this much money. That's the change in height from the point on this horizontal line that's height 80 and that point on the graph which is height 140. So that's the height of 60. They, they're going to feel like they saved $60. And again, this, the consumers who are willing to pay $100 will feel like they saved this much money. That's the $20 in difference between that point on that horizontal dotted line and that point on the graph. So we see that the area of the region between the demand price curve and the horizontal line, P equals 80, from X equals 0 to X equals 6,000, that's that point where the dotted line crosses that curve, that shaded region will have an area that corresponds to the total amount that all consumers who will buy the item will feel like they saved if the selling price is $80. Well, this region is just a triangle. We can find its area easily using geometry. Let's go up and look at the dimensions of that triangle. This triangle has a width, 6,000, and it has a height, 120. So the area of that region will be using the triangle area formula, 1 half the base times the height, just 360,000. So the total amount that all consumers will feel like they've saved is $360,000. This idea can be generalized. In general, the demand price curve won't be a line, but it will be decreasing like this. So here's the graph of the demand price curve. So the horizontal axis is the quantity demanded, or the demand quantity, which is denoted x. And the vertical axis is price, little p. Um, here is the horizontal line of height p bar. Here is the x-coordinate of that point, which is x bar. Here's x equals 0 and p equals 0. And this region will be a simple region. The top curve is the demand price curve. The bottom curve is this dashed line of height p bar. The left end point of the region is x equals 0. The right end point of the region is x equals x bar. So that means that the, the area can be computed uh, using a definite integral, computing the area between curves. The resulting number, that is the area between those curves, is called the consumer surplus for the demand price curve d of x at the price point x bar comma p bar. The official definition follows on the next page. So these words, the consumer surplus for the demand price function d of x at the price point x bar p bar, 
you use those words when that point, x bar, p bar, is a point on the demand price curve, d of x. And what it means is this definite integral. The integral from x equals 0 to x equals x bar of this integrand, d of x minus p bar. What that means is, um, in words, it's the total amount that all consumers who are willing to buy the item at the price p bar will feel like they saved if they buy it at that selling price of p bar. And in terms of the graph, it's the area of this simple region. The area of the simple region with the top curve uh, d of x and bottom curve p bar from x equals 0 to x equals x bar. So that shaded region has area that is the consumer surplus. Let's do an example. Suppose the demand price function is this, p equals 30 minus 2x. And suppose the selling price has been established as p bar equals 18. Question is, find the consumer surplus. Well, we have to compute this definite integral. Consumer surplus is found using that definite integral calculation. In order to do this, we have to first find this quantity x bar that's going to be the endpoint of the integration. That's got to be the quantity corresponding to this price, the established price, p bar, which is 18. So to do that, to find that x bar, we have to set p equals 18 in this equation. The demand price function gives us this equation, p equals 30 minus 2x. We have to substitute in p equals 18 and solve for x. When we do that, the result is x equals 6. So that is x bar is the number 6. So the calculation of the consumer surplus is on the next page. So there's our definite integral form. Consumer surplus is the integral from x equals 0 to x equals x bar of this integrand. The top curve is d of x, the bottom curve is p bar. So we substitute in the formula for our d of x, and we substitute in the value of the established price, and we put in the endpoint, the, the upper endpoint of integration is this x bar, which is the number 6, and then we integrate. First thing we do, though, is we simplify before integrating. Notice that this definite integral has uh, three terms in the integrand and has some parentheses. This definite integral is much simpler, has only two terms in the integrand and does not have any parentheses. Now this definite integral we solve using the fundamental theorem of calculus that lets us do this calculation involving an indefinite integral. The indefinite integral is very straightforward and the result is the number 36. Question B is to illustrate with a drawing. Well, the drawing that we'll make is the demand price curve. That's going to be a line with y-intercept at 0, 30 and has slope m equals negative 2. So its x-intercept will be at 15, 0. So let's label those endpoints because this graph has small type. Now the price point has coordinates 6, 18. So that means that this horizontal dashed line has height 18, and this vertical dashed line has uh, x coordinate x bar equals 6. Notice that this region is just a triangle. We can find its area just using geometry. This triangle is 6 wide and it's 12 tall, so its area is 1 half of 6 times 12, which is 36, which is the same number that we got doing the definite integral we found that the definite integral was 36. So that number, 36, is the area of that region, and that's the consumer surplus. And again, that's the money that consumers who are willing to buy the item at a price of $18 will feel like they saved by buying it at that price. And again, the consumers who will be willing to buy at that price are all of these consumers who would have been willing to pay an even higher price.
That's the end of that example, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.